think it's time to go. Oh, beautiful people, how are you? I am Gypsy J for another adventure. Not just any kind of adventure, but an educational adventure. I was down in the Gulf Shores and Orange Beach area, and my buddy here, the crew, and his wife said, Hey, why don't we go to Fort Morgan? I was like, Well, what's Fort Morgan? Because you don't know about Fort Morgan. I said, Not a clue. Well, Fort Morgan is well a fort. And it was uh, built in uh, 1834, but actually took. 15 years to build it because I started in 1819 but due to the area it was really a pain for them to get all the supplies out there so it took longer to build this place than others which blows my mind when you think about it back in the 1800s that they were able to build something like this in still in 15 years but normally they would build something like this quicker so that was really cool to think about what's even stranger is if you notice uh, it's all red brick and um, I say strange because it took 40 million of these red bricks to build this complex now it's built into a hill and it overlooks the Gulf of Mexico you know overlooking the ocean there uh, Mobile Bay to be exact and um, it paid a played a pivotal role um, in um, back in 1864 on August 5th the Union Navy came in to take Mobile Bay, to take Fort Morgan. And uh, actually, there's a really famous um, line that comes out of it. Have you ever heard, damn the torpedoes and full speed ahead? Well, that was actually said by a Union officer by the name of David Farragut. I had no clue. He went ahead and he placed his ship at the lead. Um, his ship was the Hartford. And he put it in the lead of the ships because he could see that the crew was getting nervous because torpedoes back in those days were actually weighted mines in the water. So they called them torpedoes and everybody was starting to chicken out to go in there and they're getting hammered by this fort. And he's like, nope, we're going to just get on through here. Damn the torpedoes and full speed ahead. And uh, this siege actually took two full weeks. But at the end of two weeks, um, Fort Morgan fell and it was taken over by the Union Navy. Now, that was, I thought, was just one of the coolest things, because look here, do you imagine the kind of fight that must have gone on? Because this is inside the complex, these holes are not just for air, they are also for repelling those who may be coming down the hillside, or got through the gates, or however they're gonna get in, and that's exactly what happened. So, you know, you got a lot of close combat firing, and that's why you'll notice that as you go through here uh, you've got big hallways as you're seeing here and this is going to move large equipment and large numbers of troops and and things like that but where they're inside as you can see right here they're going to go on in this is a very very thin hallway and it's made for invaders so you're invading the place and you're coming in you're getting picked off you know, that's they're going to start stacking bodies up in that hallway right there. You are scared when you're coming through there. So think about this. This is back in the 1800s. Uh, this is bloody, disgusting warfare. You know, uh, wow, it's just crazy to even look at it. So being in this place, it's just the history. I mean, I think when you start walking around and you really understand what you're looking at, you're like, man, there were people in here, and they did. They were fighting for their lives. And the guys that were getting off those ships and storming the beach and trying to get in here, you know, they're fighting for their lives. It's just insanity to think about. But, you know, that's the truth of war. So, you know, it's not pretty. Um, and this right here is a monument to, um, you know, to the good and bad, I guess, of war. You know, these are deterrents to try to stop people. But they don't always do that, and then they've got to protect people. And, well, they don't always do that, but I'm going to tell you what, the guns that these suckers have were huge. 
Um, they had 46 guns total as far as something, you know, medium to large. And they had a couple extra large guns, somewhere about a dozen or so. And, you know, they're placed and they've got four different corners. And all four corners are basically the same. And as you can see how steep the stairs are coming up here, you don't want to fall down these stairs. And you're definitely not going to be hustling up those stairs. They have different ways of getting the munitions up. And you'll notice throughout the area that there are a lot of train tracks and you'll see in a picture later on that there's actually like a little buggy that cooks along the train tracks and that's what's moving munitions around and here's what you're looking at if you were somebody with some handheld weapons looking at the beach um, here we are we're looking you know over the walls and there we are Mobile Bay is right out there Didn't have roads, you know, didn't have the scenery you see out there now. Um, definitely uh, was a crazy time in history, right? You know, I mean, look at this is where the guns were mounted. I don't know where the guns are, um, but this is where, in this corner, this is where the guns are mounted, and this is, they're going to cover, you know, this area, and then they have other corners that are exactly like this one. And then, of course, you have larger guns that are placed, you know, more to the center, which you'll see in just a few moments. They have other gun placements throughout the place, but these are a certain size gun. And then you're going to have those big nasty suckers, which are down further because they don't want to get picked off, you know, by somebody. And I don't care. It's 1860s. Um, you know, you know, a guy with a slingshot who can hit a bottle at a hundred yards. Well, that's how these people got with their antique weapons that we laugh at today, but they would have picked off a big gun if it was sitting up there too high. So once again, a lot of strategy and a lot of, uh, a lot of work goes into just surviving. You know, there, there's some pictures here and you can just see how hard it was for these people. Here we are inside the compound now. Um, you know, once again, you know, it's old, definitely. And it's seen some serious action. Um, it's nice that you can go here. The It only cost $8 to get in. Now, you can see coming down how, once again, how steep these stairs are. You definitely want to pay attention. Hold on to the railings uh, or you're definitely going to bust your butt and you're going to hurt yourself. I mean, that's going to be a hospital trip. But uh, anyway, as you walk through here, and I will admit this, and I feel I feel as dumb as they get. Um, I didn't get a piece of paper to tell me what all these markers were about, so I figured, well, you know, somebody can uh, lash out at me, maybe tell me in the comments. That would be awesome. <laughs> but look at all of these red bricks. You know, I've seen uh, down in Florida in different places. Um, I've seen red brick roads. Uh, but I never, ever in my life had seen this many red bricks in one place, This building something like this. They had several areas that were, of course, don't go back here. It's not safe. So this is a spot where they had one of the big guns. And, you know, there's, uh, there's pictures in here, and you can take, you could just pause the video and take a look at the picture. But this is a huge gun, and actually there's a guy on a cart right there going by on the rails. See the rails right there? That's, uh, you know, once again, that's how they were going to get the munitions from one end to the other. And right here is a turning spot. Uh, really cool. I mean, you know, it's like this is history, my friends. This is something that was built basically 200 years ago. We have another level, and it's got some more guns up here. And um, you know, once again, what you're what you're gonna be looking at. And, you know, I'm sure people are were standing up there with a spyglass or whatever back in the day. And uh, you know, hey, you know, this far away or this far away. But here you go. Here's the the portal or whatever. I wasn't very good with this, but look how massive this gun was. And you can pause the video, go back, pause the video, and then you can read those. But I was just so blown away by this place. Um, now, back in 1946, it was uh, decommissioned by the military and handed over to the state of Alabama. And what's interesting is that this fort was actually in four wars. 
It was in the Spanish-American War. It was in the Civil War. It was in World War I and World War II. And in World War II, it did house soldiers for a period of time. So this place uh, definitely did its duty. And I think it's great that you're able to go out here and look at it. And I think this is just a great piece of history. And uh, there's history all over America. And I think that sometimes we forget how much we are surrounded by. And, uh, you know, that's my job. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find places like this now. And I'm going to bring them to you. And however many of you are watching, that's great. And hopefully we'll get more people in, please like and share and subscribe and you know tell your friends about me i'm really trying to grow the channel and uh, you know please please show some love until next time my friends please please go out and have an adventure i always say life is an adventure go out and have an adventure until next time i am gypsy j i'll talk to all for now